I found Ragnarok continues to add layers to what I believe is God of War's secret weapon, its knotty, puzzle-packed level design. It turns puzzles into power fantasies by a simply solved conundrum. Moving forward requires just pushing on an analog stick. God of War ensures that each and every task feels invisible or even mundane. Individually, these small tasks, while not exactly challenging, makes 100% completing God of War Ragnarok such an enjoyable process. There's not a single arduous task in its list, and that's the secret to God of War's secret weapon. By making exploration and collecting so immediately satisfying, it feels not just mentally rewarding, but viscerally satisfying to solve a puzzle. This is Sony development at its very best. Dude, this game was my favorite. Do you remember how challenging this was? Yeah, but Charlie, don't get lost in that, okay? Just I got the first one, bro. Uh-oh. Ooh. Ooh. It just threw me a curveball here. Did you catch that? Uh, it went beep, beep. I know, but I don't know what order. Which one was beep? Well, which one lit up? The yellow and the blue both lit up. Well, then press yellow. I don't remember blue. which order it happened. Blue and... Oh. Okay. Yeah. You got it. You got lucky, though. Okay, now three happened. Yeah. In case you've not already heard, God of War Ragnarok is a bit of a masterpiece. Oh, have I heard indeed! Yet not a single person I can think of has actually put into words why that is. And when they do attempt to do it, you get videos like IGN's, which create the complete opposite effect. Because when the overwhelming praise comes from how accessible this game is, I find it very difficult to view it as a masterpiece. Any sort of praise they give this game outside of its narrative quickly makes you realize this game doesn't actually have the makings of a masterpiece. But then again, keep in mind that's coming from me, the type of guy who doesn't even consider his favorite game of all time to be a masterpiece. Either my standards are too high or the industry standards are too low. And as time continues to pass by, I find the latter to be more true. Because the simplest of game design will receive overwhelming praise if it's smothered in pretty graphics and presentation. Because if you were to strip either of those things away from God of War Ragnarok, you would quickly realize how mid the gameplay actually is, or downright insulting to the player's intelligence, if you personally ask me. But then again, God of War isn't designed for people like me, it's designed for people like DSP, and that is a fact. No, I'm not just making a meme, it's an actual fact, look. The taste of Vanya magic led him to new forms of experimentation. We're back. New levels of depravity. Look where we are, we're back. Boom, and there it is. He saw a shock crystal, right? He is being taught correctly. High five! All right! <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is that anything designed to ensure DSP gaming could beat it shouldn't be receiving praise for those reasons. God of War has plenty of other things going for it, but a masterpiece in game design is most certainly not it, which is what this IGN reviewer is about to do. But while its story and script will always be the shining star in this new narrative-focused era for the series, I found Ragnarok continues to add layers to what I believe is God of War's secret weapon, its knotty, puzzle-packed level design. That thing's stuck behind there I can do ice explosion right but it doesn't move I think my arrows will stick to the wood up there just give me a goddamn second boy okay I still have things to figure out maybe multiple sigils worry you I was, I was almost excited there that I would be able to, you know, solve this puzzle with my own tiny brain. Hold on, I need you to have multiple arrows here. Ah, shit. And then lower it back down. Jesus Christ, I'm doing it! Please! Please! And suddenly this junkie doesn't seem so insane now, does he? Of all the things IGN could praise God of War for, it's the one thing the entire community agrees wasn't actually that great. Why are you the way that you are? I really wish I wouldn't continue to fuel this meme that journalists don't know how to play games. But when they consider puzzles that have the answers given away to you in the first 30 seconds to be masterful design, then I can no longer just consider it a meme. It's a world that takes mathematical problems and asks you not to pull out your calculator, but instead hurl a deadly weapon at high speed and ricochet it around impossible angles. We have technology. It turns puzzles into power fantasies, and through that makes the quest for its platinum trophy 
all the more alluring. Please stop! Stop, stop, stop! You never even gave me a chance to load my bong! Just like the game never gives you a chance to actually figure out the puzzles. So you mean to tell us that your enjoyment from the puzzles didn't actually come from the puzzles? It came from how badass you feel playing as Kratos? If the thrill you got from this was a power fantasy dopamine rush and not from actually figuring out the puzzles, then we got a major game design problem on our hands. There's rarely a wasted square inch of map in God of War, particularly in its labyrinthine realms. Their roots, which climb and descend and twist around all manner of beautiful landscapes and architecture, are littered with challenges of various sizes. Often that's signalled by the glow of a treasure chest that's kept out of reach by a simply solved conundrum. Other times it's a locked route that demands a series of interlinked puzzles to be solved in order to progress onward. But even simply moving forward requires much more thought than just pushing on an analog stick. Well, with the way you're describing it, it better do more than just require you to hold the analog stick forward. You gotta press X and square too. Maybe sometimes triangle. Either way, this is all just game design 101. Nothing we haven't seen before that's been done better in other games. Traveling from one objective to another is typically a gauntlet of micro puzzles. You might use an ability to open up a pathway, then track a route around an area to drop a climbing chain, and finally scale along an upper wall to your final destination. Oh my god! Wow! Whew, you're presenting quite the difficult challenge there! Walking along edges, I could not imagine such a daunting task. I could not name you a single AAA third-person action-adventure game that does any of this. We're breaking new grounds here in the world of game design. Clearing obstacles on the path to progression is unheard of. It almost feels like a puzzle. I mean, it's not, but it feels like it. I mean, yeah, the NPCs told me where to throw the axe, completely defeating the purpose of any of these obstacles, but all that matters matters is that they were put in front of me and I completed them. Such notes are all true of Santa Monica Studios 2018 game, but Ragnarok builds upon its predecessor's level design foundations by incorporating Kratos' Blades of Chaos, introduced midway in the first game from the get-go. Here they are used as a makeshift grappling hook, which allows the level design to feature even more micro-puzzle variety. Main pathways are frequently interrupted by sheer cliffs to grapple up, large items to be pulled aside, and chasms that must be swung across. Hey, hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. What do you mean you've seen this? It's brand new. Oh wow, God of War Ragnarok features gameplay mechanics from God of War 1, 2, and 3. Amazing! Do these blades actually change the dynamic of the puzzles? Not so much. Puzzles aren't solved any differently. The solution will always be just use the correct weapon on the indicated obstacle. The room for creativity for players on how to figure out these puzzles isn't expanded. In fact, I'd say it makes the puzzles all that much more intuitive. Burn when he's to be burned with the chaos blades and freeze when he's be frozen with the axe. Now it'd be one thing if the blades were used for some actual platforming, but they aren't. Whatever's highlighted for the Chaos Blades is what you can use it on. You could replace these things with a whip and it would serve the same purpose. Players spend more time looking for the correct indicator to use the blades on instead of creatively figuring out how to use them to get past certain obstacles. Fundamentally, they do nothing to change the game design. There is no difference between throwing your axe at four different points to open up a chest versus hitting those four points with your chaos blades to open up the chest. It's the same exact puzzle. Do you get my point? Instead of adding a new way for players to figure out puzzles using these things, all they do is just add more steps to the puzzles. Individually, these small tasks may seem invisible or even mundane. <laughs> Invisible's definitely not the word I would use to describe it. There are indicators everywhere. Can't walk more than five steps without seeing something you're supposed to throw your axe at. Mundane, however, now that, that is the word I would use to describe it. But together they chain and build to create something invaluable. While not exactly challenging, these micro-puzzles contribute to a more active journey through the Nine Realms. While not exactly challenging and mundane, they serve a purpose! The purpose of making you feel like you accomplished something anyway. My god, is this what gaming journalism has come down to? Praising puzzles that aren't a challenge? These are the people the industry listens to for advice on how to build their games. Puzzles don't have to really be a challenge. They just need to serve the purpose of making sure the player is engaged in doing something my god like i said this is a game designed for people like dsp where many games will have you passively walk between locations 
God of War's approach to level design makes simple traversal a genuinely engaging activity. And as the journey progresses, so do those micro puzzles. What? This is the exact same formula the majority of AAA third person action adventure games use. And I'd argue that traversal and puzzles are done better by some of those games. God of War definitely doesn't exceed in either of these departments. It does the bare minimum to keep players engaged. Hell, if they gave players the choice to opt out of any of this and solely get to the combat and story beat moments, I'd bet you more than half of them would. Not because they're too stupid or incapable of doing it, but because it's the most unrewarding part of the game. A mix of axe and blade work is often required. For example, the anchor point for a swing frequently must be first rotated into place by throwing the axe at the mechanism. This gradual building of complexity opens up pathways into substantially more satisfying and compelling puzzle design. You're equipped for the main puzzles because of what you've learnt on your walks between battles. It's this design work that makes 100% completing God of War Ragnarok such an enjoyable process. What's your sole purpose in this video game? To do whatever you tell me? God damn it, Gump! You're a goddamn genius! No, let me correct you, it's what makes 100%ing God of War such an easy and palatable experience. It's got journalist mode enabled by default. Of course he's gonna enjoy it. It's designed so that the average player doesn't miss out on anything through one single playthrough. You can tell he's trying his absolute hardest to explain to you why these puzzles are so well designed and excellent, but all it's doing is making me question whether these can even qualify as puzzles. The man considers throwing his axe at things to be a micro puzzle. All I can say is after seeing all of that footage of his, I will no longer insult Breath of the Wild puzzles. And believe me, you have no idea how hard of a pill that is for me to swallow. You know it says something when even Nintendo has more respect for the player's intelligence than Santa Monica. Video game collectibles are often a tedious box ticking exercise, best left to grind out with a podcast playing and your brain half engaged. Yeah, well God of War doesn't require your brain to be engaged at all, based on what I'm seeing here. But God of War ensures that each and every task feels like a genuine handcrafted piece of gameplay. Handcrafted by people who think you're as dumb as DSP gaming, apparently. Simple pickups require small navigation problems to be solved, while treasure is often defended by excellent puzzles. These usually rely on templates established in the first game. Nornir chests locked by three runes remain one of my favorites, but these are enhanced by Ragnarok's new layers. So what you mean to tell me is we're getting the exact same puzzles, only uh, quote unquote enhanced. If the template for these puzzles is based off of God of War 2018, then there ain't much going for the sequel. Especially when the uh, enhancement is hitting the exact same objects that do the same thing, but with a different weapon. Like I said earlier in the video, this is not enhancing the design of the puzzles. It's simply adding more steps to what are fundamentally the same exact puzzles. A player swinging across a bridge versus someone throwing an ax to raise the other side of the bridge to get across is completing the same task. Just because it looks different doesn't mean it's fundamentally any different. Now giving the player different options on how to complete any of these tasks, that would have been a major change. But instead Santa Monica decides to give players the obvious answers to all the tasks they have to complete. Using the new runic arrows to create chains of elemental explosions is an admittedly fiddly process, but is nonetheless a welcome new wrinkle in unlocking the Nine Realms hidden secrets. Piddly. I'm convinced more and more each day that British people are not human. Well, tell me if it's such a piddly process, then why is it so welcomed? If you don't like the inclusion of it, then why do you want it to stay? You yourself are admitting it's trivial, unimportant, and trifling. None of those are the words I would use to describe something so welcomed. You're praising something that got in the way of your enjoyment. What is this? A video pointing out how the puzzles in God of War are so brilliant, or your defense of how bad they are? Of course, few people are playing God of War for the puzzles. Yeah, well that doesn't excuse how bad they are. This is a game about hacking mythical creatures and deities apart with a magical axe after all. But Santa Monica Studio deftly weaves that power fantasy into its puzzles. What type of piss poor praise is that? Praising the puzzles for how good the combat feels doesn't make any goddamn sense. Puzzles aren't intended to make you feel like an overpowered god at level 99 something. They're meant to challenge your mind, and evidently they failed in doing that. But keep it up, it's stupid ass praises like that that keeps the review copies coming in for publications like you and not YouTubers like me. In the land of Alfheim, for instance, there are gemstones that deflect Kratos' axe. And so the puzzles in this realm are built up of accurate throws that ricochet the blade from one surface to another. 
On paper, it's a mathematics test. What? But in practice, it's hurling a deadly weapon at high speed towards a trampoline. Now that's how you turn a trajectory puzzle into something worthy of a god of war. Fucking quiz! What? What does that even mean? Is it good because the puzzle mechanic is good? Or is it good because it involves Kratos' axe? What is it with journalists making a statement and never elaborating? Does he really think this puzzle made for toddlers is worthy of a God of War game? That sense of strength can be found in every action Kratos takes. Kratos. Fine, what's wrong with the way I talk? <laughs> Everything. You British folks can pronounce anything however you want, but it's Kratos, okay? I don't care how British you are, it'll never be Kratos. Moving puzzle pieces with the blades is done so via animations that convey your protagonist's incredible power. Oh my god, who the hell cares? The chains whipping as if they weigh little more than twine to the man who wields them. Chests are punched open as if they were made of paper. The axe collides with mechanisms with a blow that suggests it was fired from a cannon rather than from the arm of a man. Ooh, wow, gay! That is pretty gay. We get it, you really appreciate the uh, attention to detail in Kratos' muscular physique, but uh, Kratos' sexiness does not override bad puzzle design. It's this attention to detail and how it's combined with the game design at large that makes every part of God of War Ragnarok feel so sharply satisfying. For a game in which combat is such a key component, it does everything it can to make sure the exploration elements feel just as good as carving open a dragon or beheading a Draugr. The most important thing is that they felt good, not whether they were actually designed well, challenging or difficult by any means, they just felt like something, and that something was just as good as the combat apparently. It's all about flash, not substance. The graphics and Kratos animations are what makes the puzzles good, not the design of them themselves. This is what this man is saying. Not once could he give us a single reason why he thought the puzzles were excellent. Instead, he pointed out more reasons why they're not so great, and overlooks all of that because of how pretty it looks. And that's the secret to God of War's secret weapon. By making exploration and collecting so immediately satisfying, it's hard not to be drawn off the beaten path and into its hidden nooks. The secret to why God of War is so good is because it's so easy! That's literally what he's saying! It's all about immediate satisfaction, not earning that sense of accomplishment. This design philosophy is cancerous to video games. In an era where so many big games are packed with what feels just like content, filler that simply gives you something to do, as seen populating the maps of every Assassin's Creed game, as well as even prestige Sony first-party games like Horizon and Ghost of Tsushima, it's a miracle that everything in God of War Ragnarok feels like it has so much purpose. This is Sony development at its very best. Alright, alright, okay, that's enough. You can stop pulling your hair out now. It's over. I know, those last few seconds were very painful. Easily the most painful of the entire video. This is Sony's best? If this is the very best Sony has to offer, then the future of PlayStation's looking pretty dull. Because I could not distinguish a single thing it did differently than any other AAA third-person action-adventure game, like Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know why he compares it to open-world games like Horizon, Ghosts, or Assassin's Creed, but this is IGN after all, and they're very well known for brain-dead comparisons. Linear games like God of War require progression to be near immediate, so of course it'll always feel like you're doing something, the story is constantly progressing. So no, it's not a miracle that all of it feels like it has a purpose, because it all literally serves the same purpose of moving the player forward. Comparing it to open world games that don't do this is absolutely ridiculous. Because if he had actually compared it to linear games of its kind, he'd find that there's actually not that much of a difference. Praising this linear game for not being an open world game makes no sense. I cannot be the only one who notices all the brain dead praise this game gets. Like I said, no one can actually put into words why it's a near perfect game. Maybe my cynicism has gotten the best of me, or all those whippets finally permafried me, but I don't think I've ever seen people reach so much for praise of a game. But after seeing this IGN video, those uh, 10 Game of the Year nominations are all starting to make much more sense. Anyways, all of you should turn your notifications for this channel back on since YouTube decided to shut them off. Like, comment, share, subscribe if you so choose to, and with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Every Congo sucks ass.